All right, everyone. Uh, this is Dunk again. I'm back to talk more about my Civ 6 mod, Agricultural Revolution. Uh, last time I made a video, it uh, had not... Uh, Gathering Storm, the second expansion for Civ 6, had not yet come out. It has since come out, and I'm currently playing it. I've updated the mod. Um, I've actually come up with a couple um, patches since Gathering Storm came out, and I want to make a video just demonstrating what that's all like and what all the changes are and how that affects the game. Uh, I'm really happy with Gathering Storm. There are a lot of uh, abilities and, and new features in this game the first stirrings uh, that I think are really useful for Agricultural Revolution. So we'll get to take a look at that. Um, I just chose a random guy here. We, we got uh, Caesar. So, uh, yeah. Just give it a few seconds. All right. Okay, so that's an interesting start. So uh, if you've kept up with Agricultural Revolution before, you'll notice that, yeah, you still have all the tiles uh, have one less food than they normally do. Um, uh, we have a lot of resources are hidden behind technologies. Uh, but Gathering Storm introduces a ton of new features and new changes. For example, um, we've got new ways that floodplains work, we've got a few new technologies, um, the whole world climate system. That's pretty crazy. Uh, let's just found a city. So we can still see we still have our managed city ability right there. Uh, but let's take a look at the tech tree. So, uh, just as before, this looks uh, pretty much the same. We do see that uh, Irrigation's boost is now three terrace farms or regular farms, so the Inca get that option that they can do terrace farms to start off with instead of regular farms. Uh, Great Bath. That That's a little early for a wonder. Um, I, I don't know if I want to change that. Mm, I, I don't really know. Um, uh, this seems all pretty normal. Uh, we do have, you know, Machu Picchu in here, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and then here we can see we have buttresses. Buttresses used to be somewhere up here. It was from shipbuilding. I didn't really get that. That didn't really make any sense. I mean, maybe dams have something to do with ships. I don't know. Water? Who knows? But buttresses now comes from castles. Um, given that buttresses were uh, commonly used uh, in cathedrals, I'm thinking the whole, you know, building giant stone buildings, giant stone forts kind of leads into buttresses. Buttresses is required for siege tactics now. Uh, we have stirrups requires apprenticeship. Don't think that was there before. Cartography requires military tactics and education. Alchemy requires education. I think we had that before. Gunpowder requires alchemy. Uh, banking requires... Uh, I think banking... Banking might require alchemy. No, it just requires education and stirrups. Uh, we have printing here, mass production. Um, so industrialization. In base gathering storm, industrialization unlocks the um, uh, the first electricity generating building, which is the coal power plant. It also reveals coal. Uh, I I didn't agree with that because power plants generate electricity, presumably with steam power, which you still don't have at this point. So that doesn't make much sense. And electricity comes all the way over here. So we now have the coal power plant unlocked with electricity at the same time as the hydroelectric dam. So that is when you're going to get your power, not back here. Um, you can see the coal, but you're not going to get that huge bonus until up here. Um, one other major thing that Gathering Storm introduces is it totally changes how resources work, strategic resources. Um, and we're going to get more into that later. Uh, for, ex well, for example here, Legion is 20 iron. I'm really happy that Firaxis decided to have uh, strategic resource requirements for unique units. I think that really helps balance the game a lot. Um, but I have changed quite a bit, actually, how a lot of these work. Um, anyway, let's go back over here. Uh, actually, you know what? We can talk about this uh, quickly. You can see here that uh, cavalry units now use horses per turn. They require 15 horses to build the horsemen, and it costs one horseman horse per turn to maintain it. So horses are actually something that you, you consume over time, just having cavalry units. And that's something really important to remember. Um, 
uh, horses, horse tiles produce two horses per turn when they're improved. However, once you get feudalism, that increases by another two, so they actually get four horses per turn, per tile. Um, and so that helps balance things out. As you get into the medieval era, your ability to uh, field cavalry does increase quite a bit. Uh, so we'll see, you know, we have the iron requirements here. Um, there are some weird things that Firaxis did with units in this game. Uh, for example, the musketmen, it costs one... Uh, it cost one nighter to produce and then one nighter per turn afterwards. I don't really get what's the point of that one nighter to produce it. That just seems that it's really arbitrary. Uh, instead, it's eight iron to produce it because they did have some uh, metal in their weaponry and stuff. And then one nighter per turn to maintain it. Uh, so that actually, I don't think they, no, they didn't use nighter per turn. That's something I've added. Yeah, it was, or it was just like 20 nighter to make it. That was it. Um, I decided that seems kind of dumb. Because it's not really something you need up front. Like Niter, it's a, you know, it's it's your your munitions, right? Like that's something that's consumed. It's not like you just make it once and then it's done. So yeah, that that's gone away. Um, similarly, we have one nighter per turn of the bomber, fifteen iron, pack and shot twenty iron because they got you know a lot. They got weapons and guns and armor. One nighter per turn. Um, uh, we see we have a new building over here in mass production. It's the warehouse increases the stockpile by 25 uh, That seems pretty necessary in the uh, gathering storm base game. I think it was each of the uh, Encampment buildings increased your stockpile maximum by 10. Um, it's now I think it goes plus 15 plus 25 plus 35 I think that's how that scales now um, and this increases it by 25. It's just the same as the armory. But this goes in the industrial zone. Um, what else do we have going on? Uh, industrialization. Industrialization increases your iron production by plus 6 and your niter by plus 2. So once you hit industrialization, your niter goes up quite a bit and your iron goes up by times 4. So you go from 2 per tile to 8 per tile. And that's pretty important. Um, starting with I guess back in apprenticeship the workshop requires four iron to be built um, and so that's the first building that is going to require iron when you're constructing it and it's not that many it's, it's four compared to like a legion which is 20 it's only like it's one fifth of a legion but it's still there like, you still have to have the iron to make the workshop um, we also have the uh, shipyard which increases your strategic resource stockpile by 15 same as a barracks or a stable um, and uh, the other thing here with industrialization and this is this is a new thing the factory requires 15 iron to be built and it consumes one iron per turn so every factory that you build decreases your iron production um, and the idea there is that you have to use raw materials to produce like the production you're generating is from converting raw materials like iron into useful things like tools or machines or, or whatever, right? Um, and so that kind of counters that a little bit. Uh, we'll see like the Coras here, here, 20 horses, one horse per turn. Field cannon, 20 iron, one nighter per turn. Uh, cavalry, 20 horses, uh, one nighter per turn. Uh, eight iron, one nighter per turn. Uh, up in steam power, um, pretty normal. We have the ironclad, 60 iron to make this. That's much, like, I think 20 iron is around the highest resource cost you're gonna get in the base game. We have 60 iron here, so suddenly having 8 iron per tile doesn't sound that different anymore. So, yeah, so 60 iron here on the uh, ironclad. We'll start to see that wonders like Big Ben cost 30 iron to be built. Um, we have uh, a lot of the tier 3 buildings do cost iron now, so the research lab, 9 iron to be built. Uh, AT crew, uh, you know, 8 iron, 1 nighter per turn. So up here, electricity, coal power plant, 15 iron to be built. Hydroelectric dam, 30 iron to be built. Uh, converting from another power source into coal costs 10 iron, which is five less than actually building the power plant outright. I have infantry, one nighter per turn. The base game made it consume oil, which I guess was uh, some reference to driving in cars, but they still only have a movement speed of two, which is the same as a legion. So they're not really driving that fast. So this is now consuming niter. 
Uh, Eiffel Tower, 55 iron. Artillery, 20 iron, 1 oil. I guess with this, just because you really do need vehicles to move artillery around. You can't... I, I mean, I guess depending on the type of artillery it is. Um, I know that the artillery used in World War I was pretty damn huge. Uh, battleship, 110 iron, 1 coal. So I guess this would be comparable to, like, the, um, the Dreadnought class battleships. Like, you know, late, late 1800s, you know, turn of the, the century. Turn of the 20th century. Um, that so refining gives us the oil well. This is a new tech they've added. This is towards combustion. Combustion gives us the oil power plant. 20 iron to be built. Um, Golden Gate Bridge, 250 iron to be built. I wanted to see if I could scale this against the Eiffel Tower. Um, if I said, well, if the Eiffel Tower is 55 iron, how much iron would the Golden Gate Bridge be? So I had I did a bunch of research on the Golden Gate Bridge to find out, like, actually how much steel is in it. And uh, I think if it was correctly scaled, it'd be around 1,000. And I thought, uh, no. So it's 250. Um, because I think your base stockpile of iron is 50, you're going to have to build uh, quite a few buildings just to increase your stockpile high enough to get that. That's not too bad. So the submarine... Oil per turn, uh, you know, 60 iron. Got the tank, 30 iron, one oil per turn. Supply convoy, 15 iron, one oil per turn. So if you notice this unit, one bonus movement is started adjacent to the convoy. So um, to me, that means that if you want your oil, if you want your infantry to be driving around in cars, get them a supply convoy. This will consume the oil, and they can they can go, th you know, three tiles a turn, just like that. Um, so I think that is pretty normal. Uh, I don't see many things different here. Um, we do have, uh, Spec Ops is oil, oil, sorry, oil to produce, which I guess it comes with plastic, so there's some plastic component to how they operate, and it consumes nitro per turn. Uh, aircraft carrier, two oil per turn, 190 iron to build. I think that is the highest iron requirement of any unit, so, because it's a really big ship. Uh, destroyer, 90 iron, 1 oil per turn. That is comparable to, I believe, the... Uh, ooh, what was it? It's not the ironclad, that's 60. Is it the... No, that's 110. Is 90, is it the only 90? Submarine... It, it, it may be. Okay. Um, we have our planes, which are made out of aluminum and consume oil. Um, that's, yeah, the fighter and the bomber. Uh, we have our... Nuclear, let's recommission. Nuclear reactor here, 30 iron to be built. To swap, it costs 20 iron. Uh, so there's our geothermal plant, our helicopter. Helicopter, yep, 45 aluminum and one oil per turn. I believe the helicopter was actually like one oil, one aluminum to build and then one aluminum per turn to maintain. I guess somehow they were putting aluminum into their gas tanks. Who knows? Uh, we got the drone here, eight aluminum to be built. Um, there's our Earth satellite. Communication satellites now cost 10 aluminum, so that's interesting. Mechanized infantry, 30 iron, 1 oil per turn. Rocket artillery, 30 aluminum, 1 oil per turn. Mobile SAM, 15 aluminum, 1 niter per turn. Uh, this is a support unit, though. Um, so we got the uh, jet fighter, 50 aluminum, 1 oil per turn. Missile cruiser, 150 iron, 1 oil per turn. That's the upgrade of the battleship. Modern AT, 15 iron, 1 niter per turn. Modern armor, 30 iron, uh, 1 oil per turn. Jet bomber, 50 aluminum, 1 oil per turn. And then up here, giant death robot, 70 iron, 3 uranium per turn. 3 uranium per turn, that is the same as the base game. The, the thermonuclear device is just 20 uranium. Um, so yeah, that is how that all works. Uh, let's take a look in here. Mostly, I think this is pretty much all the same that we have going on in here. They, I think they might have added a, a few new techs, um, or civics rather. So, feudalism increases your uh, horse yields by plus two. It just says in there. Uh, da, 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 da. What is that? I, I believe they added something new. Do, 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 do. They did sort of move around where these policies come from, whether it comes from these, these or not. Uh, they added environmentalism. So, that's the, the only information era civic they added. And it gives plus 25% tourism across your empire. And I guess they added all these these ones, um, which add the, the late game uh, government types. 
but I didn't really do anything with these. Or actually, I, didn't, I haven't really done anything with these late game uh, things either. So I think that covers uh, most of what we have going on. Um, so yeah, rebalances to how uh, resources work. I find that um, it really compels you to do something about resources. Like, they seem like a valuable, like everyone wants them, they're a valuable resource to have on hand. Um, and you're going to be sorry if you, you don't have enough of them. Iron becomes incredibly important. Like, you really have to secure a source of iron early on, uh, as pretty much every unit, starting in, I guess, like the classical era, and really in the medieval era, uses iron in some way, unless it's a cavalry unit. But even the heavy cavalry units may still use iron, like the knight. Uh, so yeah, it becomes a really important resource to keep track of. Um, I feel like the game is a lot more fun now than it used to be. Um, especially with, I think, some of the, the you know, the, the mechanics in Gathering Storm. So let's ju just do a scout here. Let's just play a little bit. Uh, this video has been going on for, I get what, 16, 17 minutes now? Uh, maybe a little less. Alright, so... We'll do some mining. And uh, we'll just get a look at how this looks. Okay. So. Oh, there's a goodie hat. Yeah, we have our named rivers here. Poe River. Not sure who's that is supposed to be. Is best. Cool. Um, you know, there may be one or two other things that I've done since the last update. Uh, we might give it a little bit of time and we can take a look at that. Oh man, I don't really remember what the state of the mod was back then. Uh, yeah, I think there are definitely a few things that I've added. Um, so we'll try and take a look at that. I'm going to do a builder right now. Just really want to get that builder out soon. Yeah, this is a this is a low tier game. This is just Prince difficulty. Oh. Ah, Suleiman. What's up, my friend? Who deserves more credit? Let's send him a delegation. Military tradition. All right. And do pottery now. Thank you, buddy. I guess he must have come around this way because he didn't see this camp. Oop, a boost to early empire. That is nice. Like to the apples. Hmm, Dead Sea. Oh, hang on. Yeah, I don't want to over-research this. No need. All right. So we didn't see any copper around here, uh, which would have been nice. I don't know, um, every sieve has a river uh, start bias now, a little one at least, so that they're not going to start in the middle of nowhere, or they, they're less likely to. Without craftsmanship. Um, but you know, uh, there's never a guarantee, and also Rome is more likely to spawn near iron now. Let's pick up astrology. Because religions are pretty strong. I don't want to get too far away from my city. Yeah, there's some copper over here. Interesting. Yeah, okay. I'm really interested in taking a look at uh, how religion looks and acts. I do want to get my um, boost to uh, irrigation. So I'm going to make three farms first. Before improving anything else. I got a city state, Granada. Every nation live. Cool. 
Um, I'll buy that tile. We need the boost to that, so that's nice. I really want to settle somewhere on this river. So as to ensure we get some nice yields from these floodplains. I don't believe in astrology. Cool. There's an irrigation boost. Alright. Maybe like right here. Then we could pick up the copper. Yeah, that would be at a range of this. I guess we can make another city, though. Alright, holy site. I guess that's something we should think about doing. Eh, who needs it? Uh, instead, let's do a builder. When do we get the Pantheon? 25. Nice. Ah. What's up, Pedro? Please to writing. Not bad. Thousands have lived with Alright, irrigation. Pick up animal husbandry. Horses down there. Furs at a range. Got horses over here. Still 25. Okay. I don't know if it changes. Does it change over time? Like in Civ 5? Uh, I guess I guess I can mention this. Um, I've given. So volcanoes are a thing that can spawn now. I don't know if we have any on the map. Uh, but volcanoes give an additional adjacency bonus to uh, holy sites and campuses. Excuse me. On top of the mountain that they're already on top of. So uh, volcano is a plus two bonus to a campus or a holy site. Um, but of course, you know, that's a dangerous place to put a district. Anyway, so yeah, first change. Goddess of the Hunt is faith now. Uh, I believe by default it's food, so that's one difference. And God of the Sun is a new pantheon I've added, plus one faith to farms on rice and wheat. There weren't, I felt like there weren't enough faith pantheons, because if you have a religion, faith is important. And I mean, if you're going for the religious game and you can't get a faith like a pantheon that generates some amount of faith, then you may have a hard time going forward. So we have God of the Sun, which. You know, there wasn't really a pantheon just for having rice and wheat, like farm. There wasn't really like a farming pantheon. There was one, um, you know, same symbol, goddess of the harvest for harvesting uh, resources. So if you destroyed your wheat or rice, you could get some faith. But this one is just having it over time. Um, but I don't think we want to take that one because we don't have any of that. Um, instead, we'll probably take stone circles because we got. A few stone. Stone isn't that great a tile to work because it doesn't have the base food and the quarry doesn't improve the food yield. But, uh, you know, if we need some faith, it's an option that you have. Alright, we don't need that anymore. So we'll just work on that. Uh, improve. We'll have those tiles improved soon. Yeah, pick this guy. I don't know if I'm actually playing optimally. I feel like I'm not. Just because... I haven't really thought about optimal playstyles. What the optimal, you know, way to go about doing it is. Maybe I prioritize if certain things no dogs in more or less than I should. 
Uh, okay. I do want to get a holy site. I don't really want to put it on a river. Or next to my capital. I will... Okay, we'll put it here. There's probably a lot of money to spend on that, but... Uh, it's probably fine. And I also want to get a settler out, so I'm not sure. Like, which one do I go for right now? <laughs> yeah, there's our masonry. I'm not going to research bronze working all the way. Just enough. Thank you, buddy. Nothing much up there. Okay. We can get our uh, improved six tiles boost. about the production right now. Just grow. I find that focusing on growth is pretty good early on in Agriculture Revolution because I guess that's probably true in all Civ games. But especially when food is limited. Yeah, so there's a there's a volcano. Built the wonder. Coming up on half an hour on this video. I think I mean, I haven't really got much accomplished, but I did talk a lot about uh, the changes that are new um, in Gathering Storm, in Agricultural Revolution's update for Gathering Storm. Uh, it's free to download. I mean, I guess all mods are free, but you know, I'll leave a link to it on the workshop in the description below. Please check it out if uh, you enjoyed this video. It really helps me out, and I'll thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.